John Wick gets bullets right, mostly. Up next on Science Goes to the Movies. Welcome to Science Goes to the Movies, a look at the stories of science and how they change our culture. I'm Lisa Beth Kovitz. The John Wick series of puppy-loving violence has some of the most wildly creative depictions of firearms, and they do it, mostly, without breaking the laws of physics. Our guest today is James Donalo, retired NYPD detective with the New York City Police Department's Firearms Analysis Section. That's ballistics if life was a TV show. Jim is currently the president of the Stryer Group, which offers forensic training and case consultation. Welcome to the show. Good morning. I love John Wick, and there's so much to discuss, but let's jump right into the underwater fire scene from John Wick Parabellum. So James, for starters, can all guns shoot underwater? Uh, yes, most guns can, not all of them though. And it, it depends on a lot of different things. Uh, water itself uh, offers a lot of drag on the firearm itself. So uh, if the firearm is a, an automatic type of firearm, uh, it, could, it could slow down that process and jam the gun. So you get the first shot out of it, but uh, not, not a consecutive shooting out of it. So if the, if the bullet is in the chamber and the gun goes underwater, chances are good that it will shoot? Yes. So that chamber is watertight in most guns, in it's, many guns. It's really not watertight. Uh, what happens is it uh, depends on what type of uh, system it, it has. If it's a striker type of system, uh, the frying pan uh, juts out of a, a hole that's in the uh, breech face of the gun. Uh, that's called a frying pan aperture. Uh, when that frying pan comes forward, it crushes a primer and uh, discharges the live cartridge. So water would have to somehow slow that to, a, uh, to a, a point where it's not enough force to crush that primer. Okay, so in this scene, the gun is fired at close range, but the water stops the bullet. Uh, is that possible of all things? Is water something that would stop a gun? Water is actually a very good medium to stop a bullet. <clears throat> when we test fire firearms for operability, uh, we shoot it into a water tank. It's, it's basically an eight foot tank uh, with about 700 gallons of water in it. And you fire the firearm into the uh, water tank and the bullets just drop in the water and, and you recover them after they, after they fire it. Why they use water is that water uh, is less likely to cause more damage to the bullet. Uh, so it's easier for us to make a comparison on. Uh, but I, I've never seen a bullet not stopped by the water tank. All those Western movies where, where gun shooters are thrown over flimsy wooden tables and those tables are stopping bullets, is, is, is wood a good way to stop a bullet? In my opinion, wood's not a good way. It would uh, depend upon how thick that wood is and what caliber gun you're shooting into it. Uh, it would be good cover, but it would uh, a good uh, concealment, but not good cover. It seems intuitive that water is not a good cover, but wood is a good cover. So what kind of training do police officers have so that they can know what to, what to pick out when they're, in a, when they're in a terrible situation? Well, we're taught uh, during the whole situation to uh, assess uh, and have situational awareness. Uh, we're constantly looking to see where we might have to go for cover or concealment uh, because situations, they go bad really, really quick. Uh, so uh, whenever I was in a situation, I would look for the place that I'm going to seek cover or concealment in. Uh, like as you're walking in, your brain is thinking, what am I going to do if this goes bad? No, and, and it doesn't stop there. It's also when you're, when you're there for a while, you're, you're still assessing the situation. Uh, the situations change in different ways. Yeah. Uh, even outside with a, a vehicle, uh, most of the vehicle... Uh, is not a good place to hide behind it. Uh, bullets can penetrate vehicles. Really? So uh, we were taught to, uh, to use the engine and also the, uh, the wheels as cover. The wheels because of the tires or wheels because of? The metal. The metal. metal. Wow, and of course the engine. Correct, the engine. is all metal. Correct. So fascinating. Yes. You don't even think about it when you see it on TV. It just all just happens. 
That's correct. I think we also have a sense that in, if we're inside anything, bullets can't touch us because that's what happens on television. I've seen uh, low caliber bullets go right through a car and out the other side. Uh, so if you were in the middle of that, that would be a problem. In the movie's water scene, the shot to Wick's body doesn't even touch him, giving our John a chance to swim up close enough and put his weapon practically on the other guy's head. And most of the bad guys, and some of the dogs, in John Wick movies die from perfect headshots. And it does seem that in most movies that the only way to stop someone moving towards you is to shoot him in the head or in the heart. Jim, when I stub my toe, I gotta sit down for a minute. Is do real people keep moving after being shot in the leg or the shoulder or the arm? And, or is a headshot the only way to really stop someone? The human body is very resilient. A uh, human body could take a lot of damage uh, before a person is stopped. We, we, we don't shoot to kill, we shoot to stop. Uh, so uh, I've seen incidences, incidences where uh, people have been struck in the head by a bullet and the bullet bounced off their head, it bounced off their skull. Uh, also, there's times when I've seen uh, cases, where well, I know about cases, where someone was shot, in fact, they handled a case like that, where uh, a woman was shot right between the eyes with a, with a gun, and the bullet just traveled around her head under the skin and was recovered from the back of her head. And, you know, knocked her unconscious, but didn't kill her. Uh, what stops a person is usually uh, a strike to the spine, uh, a strike to the brain, or uh, eventually uh, strike to the heart where you bleed out. So it's, it's usually not instantaneous like the movies. Right. Uh, yeah. But a headshot could be, a headshot yeah. could definitely be. Yeah. In movies and in real life, if you're hunting, say, a deer, when that deer is shot, it falls down. But in movies, when you shoot a human, very often that human is blown across the room from the impact of the bullet entering their body. And it happens so often in movies that we don't even think about it anymore, but now we're gonna think about it. Can a bullet entering a body push that body across the room like we see in the movies? Well, it's common physics, it's basic physics. Uh, the energy that is expended uh, with the bullet, the, uh, the uh, force that that bullet strikes the body, there would be an equal and opposite uh, uh, force going back towards the shooter. So for, for this bullet to push a 200 pound man through the air, you know, 12 feet, uh, if the person was firing that weapon, they would get pushed, you know, 12 feet back the other way. So it's got a, it goes it, like that. There's, there's an equal amount of force in both directions. Uh, what people don't realize is that when you fire a firearm, uh, your arm and your body uh, absorbs a lot of that force. Right. And also the, the force that is pushed out by the bullet itself, even though the bullet is very damaging and, and can kill you, uh, is not as much as what people feel like. But it looks so good in the movies. Uh, and that's what the problem is, is that uh, it is uh, exciting. Yeah. And in, real in reality, um, b people are struck by bullets and uh, don't even know they're struck by bullets. Really? Yes. Really? How do they not know? I mean, again, I stub my toe. Ah. <laughs> uh, usually, it's, you know, if you're in a stressful situation, a oh. fight, uh, a, a, you know, a soldier, uh, you're in the middle of a battle. Uh, you're not thinking of everything that's happening to you. You're focusing on uh, something that you're doing. Right. And uh, yeah, you could be struck by a bullet and not even realize it. Right, sure. It's like when you go to play paintball and you come home and you've got a bruise here and you're like, when did that happen? Yeah, that's it. absolutely well, right. A lame, a bit of a lame comparison, but still. Well, it's a projectile hitting you, so yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's a good comparison. The distance between movies and reality has become something called the CSI effect or CSI syndrome. And it refers to the many ways that the portrayal of forensic science in fictional dramas has infected real juries' opinions of real court cases. As president of Stria Consulting, you and your team are often in court. Do you find that the CSI effect is affecting people's uh, understanding of ballistics? Yes, I, I, I've seen it go from uh, when I first started doing this 30 years ago, uh, where uh, jurors would intently listen to you and, and make up their uh, opinion based on what is presented to them by an expert witness. They have to accept you as an expert, and then they would listen to your words, and, and it would help them to make a judgment. Uh, now I believe that uh, the effect of, of movies and television and uh, uh, the excitement of these, uh, these uh, venues have uh, uh, jaded the jury uh, somewhat. 
where uh, everybody assumes that you're going to get DNA off an object. They assume you're going to get a workable fingerprint off something. Uh, they assume that you're going to be able to tell exactly where that bullet came from, and it's not like that. Let's talk about fictional people handling fictional weapons. Keanu Reeves and Halle Berry trained long and hard with firearms expert Taryn Butler before they ever came on set, and the weapons handling in Parabellum has been praised for the exactitude of its depictions. Tim, what's the learning curve like to really know how to handle a firearm? Well, it would depend on who's uh, giving you the instruction, uh, what type of, of um, situation you're in to, to learn the, uh, uh, the technique of uh, firing or handling a firearm. Uh, as a police officer, I went to a six-month police academy. Uh, during that six, those six months, there were a number of weeks where uh, we, we drilled and fired those weapons all day long. Mm. Uh, so before I even left the academy, I, I had, have had to have shot all, over 2,000 rounds. Uh, then it's up to you to maintain your proficiency uh, with a firearm by actually uh, shooting the weapon and maybe uh, uh, receiving additional training in your weapon. Uh, what I know about Keanu Reeves uh, by watching videos is that he's very proficient with a, with a firearm. Uh, he seems to have trained many, many hours uh, and got very, very, uh, became very proficient. Uh, Halle Berry is another one. I've seen a video with her and uh, extremely hardworking and proficient with her firearms. Yeah. Yeah. According to the Internet, as John Wick, Keanu Reeves uses three recognized shooting stances, the center axis relock, the weaver, and the isosceles positions. What did I just say? <laughs> what are those? What are those? And, and, and what are the different positions, and is one better than the other? Uh, in my opinion, uh, I was trained in two of those three uh, uh, positions. Uh, the, uh, the modified weaver or the weaver stance is a more comfortable stance, uh, where the isosceles was a more uh, rigid, uh, focus type of stance. Uh, police departments have now gone from the isosceles to a weaver or a modified weaver stance. They find that it, it helps the shooter uh, hit his, his or her target. Really? Uh, the other uh, one we spoke about uh, was a unique stance. It was created by, uh, I believe, an Englishman. And uh, it was, that's more of a defensive, it's a, more of a complicated stance where you have, you have uh, uh, defensive positions or moves that you could make while you're in that stance. In the center axis relock position, the butt of the weapon is at an angle, but not perpendicular to the ground, and it looks kind of cool. And that coolness has led to a movie trope that features mostly gangsters aiming with their arms straight out and the weapon parallel to the ground, using a sighting practice called flash sight picture. Even the word flash sight picture sounds cool, but, but is it a good choice? Is it a... Well, that, that, that particular system is good for uh, close quarters uh, firing. Uh, what, it, what it works on is the fact that you, you punch the uh, gun out, uh, and this is the 45 degree type of hole, not the, uh, the gangster type, uh, type of hole. Uh, you punch the gun out and, and look for that front sight and keep the front sight on your target. And uh, you're not going to be extremely accurate, but you should hit the target. We know in real life that the off-axis shooting is not the best thing to do in terms of hitting with accuracy. Well, it's not how the gun was designed. The gun was designed to be fired uh, in a 90 degree uh, straight up uh, position. Uh, depends on the situation. Maybe, maybe you can't uh, uh, place the gun in that position. Maybe you're hiding behind something, you lean out. Or, you know, John Wick does all sorts of different body contortions uh, right. while he's firing. So, so, you know, you do what you could do with the firearm. Uh, the more comfortable way, the more uh, n uh, normal, if I could use that word, normal, is to use the, uh, the sights uh, as they were set up for that purpose. Or accurate. Correct. A more accurate way of using it. That's correct. It. Yeah. And what about weapons that go off accidentally? We, we see all over the movies are guns that hit the floor and go off. And uh, how, does, how does the gun go off if the trigger's not pulled? Okay, I, I, I brought a, uh, a replica firearm, if you want to use that as a demonstrative. Yeah, let's, so let's, let's see it. So we know that this, how do we know that this is a replica? This is a replica, as you can see, by the uh, plugged barrel, which is an orange uh, plug for that reason. It's a bright orange plug. 
Uh, the fact that you cannot fire a round out of it, uh, even though it works uh, very similar to a firearm, it's used for training purposes. Uh, it's, it's, it's known as a replica firearm as opposed to a firearm. And what, uh, it works exactly like this particular firearm uh, would work. This is a, a model of a 1911 uh, government model 45, which was used by armed forces up until you know, a, a couple of decades ago. Uh, so how a firearm works, and this might help you understand uh, a couple of things that we spoke about, is that uh, this is a, an automatic firearm, which is uh, basically a self-loading firearm. When you squeeze the trigger and release that hammer, this is the hammer portion, hammer comes forward and strikes a firing pin. The firing pin is, dr is driven forward and uh, crushes a primer uh -huh. that's on the uh, bottom of that cartridge. The cartridge itself is made up of four parts. It's the, uh, the primer, the cartridge case, mm -hmm. the bullet or the projectile, and the propellant that's inside that, that case. Uh, so as that firing pin comes forward, it crushes that primer, creates a spark, ignites that propellant, and the propellant burns and creates a tremendous uh, pressure, gas pressure, that, uh, like the cork of a champagne bottle, uh -huh. the bottle itself is made to hold the pressure, but the cork is the weak spot. So on a, uh, on a cartridge, the weak spot is where the bullet is sitting. Okay. So that bullet is going to be propelled out down the barrel of the weapon and towards the target. That's fascinating. Um, you, you know, we don't see anybody on, on, in John Wick, they actually reload, but we rarely see people on other shows having to reload their guns. And even on John Wick, they don't reload, he never reloads the, the clip. He has other clips that he puts in because loading a clip is no small task. Right, if I could demonstrate. Please. You know, you would have to, if, if this weapon was, you know, in a firefight, right. you would have to drop the magazine out. This is the, uh, the magazine. Uh -huh. uh, you would have to load one round at a time through the uh, top portion of that magazine and then reinsert it into the firearm. Right. Uh, and then uh, manipulate the top slide to load one into the chamber. Uh, oh, Okay. So a lot of times what you'll see uh, Keanu Reeves do is that he's not completely out of ammunition. He'll drop the mag out, just slap another mag in, and it's ready to fire again. Uh, if that last round is fired, usually the slide will be back in this position. Uh, he would pull his, put his magazine in and then release the slide forward and it'd be ready to go. Fascinating. The actor's skill is incredible because just that reloading of clips is quite a substantial undertaking, quite a, a very specific undertaking. So the question, go back to the question you asked me originally, is that uh, can this, if this was a firearm, can this fire uh, if, you, if you drop the weapon? Uh, there's a number of ways it can. Uh, it's not designed to, obviously. Uh, you could have a, um, a, a flaw inside the uh, mechanism, which could make it go. Uh, also, when you have a cocked hammer like that, that, put, that particular uh, hammer is being held back by something called a sear. It's just a small uh, metal device that holds that hammer back until you squeeze the trigger. Uh, if this firearm falls on something right. uh, like concrete or whatever, and if, if it's able to defeat that, that sear, it will fire. Uh, there's another thing called inertia firing, uh, where... Uh, we were talking about before with the force, so the force will, will come down uh, and cause the action inside the uh, firearm to actually uh, rebound back with possibly enough force to fire a uh, firearm. Most modern firearms, if, if not all fire, uh, modern firearms, have uh, safety systems in it yeah. to, to not right. have that happen. So in that John Wick uh, scene that you spoke about, what I was looking for uh, for reality uh, were, were a number of different things. What happens is they both go into the water. Uh, Wick, as these guns are pulled on each other, Wick separates himself four or five feet away from the other shooter. The other shooter basically shoots in a tight, almost from a hip type of shot. You'll see the bullet come out, it goes out about three or four feet, and then it just drops yeah. down. What happens is the bullet, when it leaves the barrel in air, uh, a bullet is very aerodynamic. It's also spinning 
because of the uh, rifling that's inside the firearm. So that allows it to go through the air very accurately and, and travel for a long distance. Once it hits another medium, uh, like wa water, uh, the uh, bullet will tend to destabilize. The uh, spinning effect will be altered. It's, it has a certain amount of drag in that water. And what will happen is that it'll stop being pushed forward and the gravity will just drop it down. Because it just drops bottom. in the scene. That's correct. And, and that was very realistic. Uh, I fired you know, many, many shots into water tanks. And that's what it looks like. The bullet will spin in and then drop uh, due to gravity. So he separated himself uh, from the, I think it was two shots. Both of them went into the water like normal and then dropped. And then he closed the distance and placed it up against the neck of the uh, person and fired a shot. Yeah. Oh, and also when we're speaking about uh, a firearm firing underwater, yeah. what happens is this is under spring tension. So when this comes forward, there's a certain amount of force that's created by the spring. In, in water, that's going to come in, 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 in contact with the drag of the water, and it might slow it down so that it will not properly reload. So that question you asked me before is, can you fire multiple shots under the water? It depends on the gun. Yeah. And um, if it hasn't been altered to fire under water, it likely would just jam after that first shot. Not even get not even get a bullet into the chamber. Correct. It's it's not going to properly unload yeah. that that fired one, right. and when it right. comes forward, it's not going to it's not going to properly load the right. next one into the chamber. Because bullets are made to fly through the air. Correct. In John Wick, Keanu Reeves orders weapons like he's choosing fine wines, and he he handles his weapons respectfully. But filed under gun movie tropes, there are two interesting subcategories: gun twirling and pants positive safety. Playing with your gun and shoving your gun into your trousers, is, it's all over the movies. But it, in real life, that's got to be a bad idea. Uh, I know of cases where people have, been, uh, have injured themselves by placing a gun in their waistband. Uh, what we were taught to do was, uh, because our firearm would be out if, if there's a gun involved, to put that recovered firearm into your own holster, safely uh, storing the, we the weapon. Uh, I've known cases where, where people have shot themselves in very sensitive spots. Um, should I say that one? Okay. And uh, in one case that I worked, um, this person uh, probably has to use three urinals to, uh, to go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, and then as going back to what you were saying before, is I've also worked cases where a person was shot multiple times. Uh, a story, is that right? All right, so... Um, this one case I did uh, when I was on patrol, uh, it was shots fired, we get there, there's a guy laying on the uh, kitchen floor, he's got five gunshot wounds to the groin. Uh, he was selling guns, uh, the guy who was buying the guns off him decided that he was going to take all of his guns, so he shoots him five times and then flees with all of his guns. Uh, when I got there, he was conscious, he was talking to us, uh, actually when, we, when he, we rolled him over, bullets were falling out of his clothing. <laughs> Uh, because they, per they perforated his body. Uh, and then two years later, I, I, I get a, uh, a fugitive felony warrant on, on this particular individual. Uh, and I went to his house to arrest him again. And um, when he opened the door, he had a broken leg, uh, full cast up to his hips. And he told me how he survived the gunshot wounds and, and according to him, no problems. And uh, he has now a broken leg because somebody threw him out of a car at 40 miles an hour. That guy. So he was, I call him lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Not so lucky. <laughs> or unlucky. That's a, good, that's a good point. So you should always put your gun in your holster. If you can, that's correct. Or, or, or hold it. I mean, keep it, you know, there's, there's uh, or play if you can. Uh, but there's something that's called the Brooklyn bounce in Brooklyn, where if a gun drops in Brooklyn, it's, it's going to disappear. <laughs> so you don't want to place the gun down on the ground if, the, if there's an arrest type of situation, because it might not be there when you look at for it again. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually the onlookers might pick it up and you know, flee with it. Uh, I can tell you another thing that I've done in my own career is that it was drilled in me to put it in the holster, put it in the holster. First time I, I, I arrested a person with a gun, he, he tossed the gun down to where my foot was. I stepped on the gun, 
And then when I had my opportunity, I re-signed, I picked the gun up and stuck it in my waistband, which was the worst possible thing I could have done. So in, in an uh, excitable situation, you know, people do stupid things, and I did that. Well, yeah. There, I'm a human. Th it doesn't seem like, it seems like the reasonable place to put it when you have to put it someplace. It's just very dangerous. Absolutely. I mean, uh, a firearm, if that hammers back or if your finger's in contact with that trigger, as you're forcing that into your waistband, you could apply enough pressure to fire that, uh, that firearm. When you watch movies, is there some gun, some firearm-related movie trope that just makes you go, no, don't do that, stop that? Uh, I was taught by a, a senior member of the unit when I first got there, and he had a great expression, which was, I want one of those Hollywood movie guns uh, that never misses, that kills everybody with one shot, uh, that I don't have to reload, and uh, that makes me bulletproof. So uh, I, I go with that theory. If you watch Hollywood movies, uh, they take a lot of a autistic license with how a firearm works. And uh, think of it, the normal, uh, even a, uh, a rifle situation, it's about 30 rounds. Yeah. Uh, that's only a couple of seconds of firing the, the weapon. But yet in movies, they shoot hundreds of rounds without changing the magazine. Jim, thanks so much for spending time with us. Well, thank you for having me.